Poland for Britain, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing new discoveries coming from a somewhat unusual structure located around the Milky Way galaxy known as the Magellanic Stream. A structure that was discovered a few decades ago, but something that we only recently started to understand based on various observations and, of course, based on the discoveries using modern telescopes. And so in this video let's discuss a little bit more about all of this, but I guess let's start with a bit of a misconception. This is not what the Milky Way galaxy most likely looks like. It's way, way more complex, way more chaotic, potentially has only two major arms, and is also unlikely to be a perfect disk. A lot of recent observations and a lot of recent measurements determined that there's a lot of stuff here that we never knew existed. And so a much better representation of the galaxy would be something like this. First of all, the disk, as you can see, is not really flat. Second of all, it has a lot of different unusual streams located all over the place, representing previous collisions with a lot of different galaxies. They all sort of resemble this, and the most famous one is known as the Helmi stream, discovered two decades ago. But these are basically remnants from previous galaxies that were absorbed by the Milky Way, and are essentially sort of like leftover pieces. But as you can see here, we also have two partners, Large Magellanic Cloud and Small Magellanic Cloud, that you can also see right here in front of the simulated Milky Way galaxy, which orbit around the galaxy and are most likely on the eventual collision course. But not so long ago, the scientists discovered that these galaxies must have interacted in the past because there's another structure produced by both of them that seems to be way longer than anything else. It was only detected when the scientists started studying the Milky Way galaxy in a lot of different frequencies of light. And it's really only visible in certain frequencies that show us gas specifically radio frequencies and microwave frequencies. Up until recently, you would not really see anything here in optical light. And this was originally detected back in 1965, but it wasn't really until recently that the scientists realized how incredibly large this structure is. This is known as the Magellanic Stream, an extremely high-velocity cloud that seems to extend between large and small Magellanic Cloud galaxies, but also extends much longer than that, very likely even going around the Milky Way but it also contains an additional feature referred to as the leading arm. All of this, by the way, is really, really long. It's very likely at least 600,000 light years in length, but also pretty far away from us at almost 200,000 light years from planet Earth. And some of the previous studies established that this is actually a really fast moving cloud, but it's not moving in the same direction. Some parts are moving 400 kilometers per second in one direction, other parts are moving approximately 400 kilometers per second in the other direction suggesting that it's basically spreading, but also moving around the Milky Way. And so it's really in 2018, by using observations from very powerful quasars, that several teams were finally able to make definitive observations and make definitive conclusions about what's happening inside the stream. In this case, because the light from these quasars is coming from behind the galaxy and also behind the actual gas, it basically becomes possible to analyze what's inside of it, determining the overall chemical composition. And the results here suggested that the composition is extremely similar to small Magellanic Cloud, the smaller galaxy orbiting around the Milky Way, confirming that all of this gas was very likely stolen from the small Magellanic Cloud, reducing the total mass of the galaxy, very likely changing its shape, but also of course suggesting that it's the larger Magellanic Cloud that seems to be winning this unusual battle of gravity. It's stealing the mass from the smaller partner and is stretching it around the Milky Way, literally forming a kind of a belt that we now refer to as Magellanic Stream. This was of course a pretty big discovery and there's a video in the description that talks a little bit more about it. But this was just the first major discovery. A year later, in 2019, the scientists have also identified an unusual young star cluster known as Price Wellen 1 that seems to be about 90,000 light years away from planet Earth contains low metallicity and is also part of this unusual formation. But this is a very new star cluster with signs of very recent star formation. With the implication here being that the gas inside of this unusual stream sometimes forms molecular clouds and sometimes even forms new stars. And now we have a new discovery, a discovery of several relatively massive stars that seem to be located in the stream and seem to be also traveling inside of it, confirming that it's not just gas. All of this described in a new study that you can find in the description below. And so here they discovered 13 red giant stars, similar to Betelgeuse, anywhere between 200,000 and 320,000 light years away from planet Earth, that seem to move in the same way to the rest of the gas, but also seem to have very similar chemical composition. With all of this once again discovered by the iconic Gaia telescope. And so out of approximately a billion different stars in the catalog, 
they discovered only 13 that seem to be moving inside the stream, which also represents some of the farthest stars we've discovered in the outer galaxy, and something that the scientists will be studying for many years to come. But intriguingly, they're not all the same. Some of them seem to be poor in metals, or basically very rich in hydrogen and helium, other ones seem to be somewhat similar to our Sun, enriched in metals, and thus, very likely, produced from much younger gas. And it's the metal-rich stars here that are a bit mysterious. It's not clear what exactly they're doing here, because everything else contains very different composition. Although the metal-poor stars do seem to have very similar motion and very similar composition to both the Magellanic Stream and the Small Magellanic Cloud. So technically they could have come from the galaxy, or they could have been created from the gas that was stolen from the galaxy earlier. And so one suggestion here is that the metal-poor stars might have come from the galaxy itself, but the metal-rich stars might have been created in the stream through the interaction of various gas over time and through the mixing of other gas coming from other locations. And if these suggestions are correct, it also implies we finally found stars that were most likely formed outside of the galaxy itself, confirming that stars can form in different locations and thus representing some really intriguing targets for future studies. But because these are still very early discoveries, we don't really know where the stars came from or exactly what any of this means, and it will probably take a few additional studies to confirm all of the discoveries from this paper and to start explaining their origin. By the way, in case you wanted to imagine where these stars would be located in relation to the galaxy, they would be somewhere right here. This is approximately 200,000 light years away. So these would be really, really far away from the Milky Way, and if the stars can form so far away, that would be quite groundbreaking and would allow us to study a population of stars we've never seen anywhere before. At the same time, by studying these stars, we're going to learn more about both large and small Magellanic clouds and their eventual evolution or what's going to happen to them as they interact with the Milky Way. Right now, the assumption is that they're going to collide and probably become one with the Milky Way, but exactly when and how, that's of course unknown. Nevertheless, pretty exciting discoveries, especially because these discoveries from the Magellanic stream do not happen very often. As I mentioned, the last discovery was only in 2019. And so at least for now, that's kind of all we know. Pretty exciting, pretty intriguing, but more follow-ups will probably discover even more. And so until those future discoveries, thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who has learned about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.